Hi, my name is Elizabeth Young. I'm a left-handed calligrapher in Marietta, Georgia, and I'm making a small YouTube video series about left-handed calligraphy specifically. Um, something called the Modern Calligraphy Summit came out recently and it had some awesome tips for getting started in calligraphy and watercolor design, wedding imitations, um, just those kinds of things in general. And they had a really small section about calligraphy for left-handed people, um, which was helpful, but they also didn't really go into depth. And so I wanted to offer a couple more tips for people because the past year especially, I've really kind of had to figure out how to do left-handed calligraphy almost on my own. Um, there, People are under the impression that calligraphy is only for right-handed people, which just isn't the case. You just kind of have to know. Uh, the tools of the trade, the right things to use, um, and basically placement of your hand and things like that. So this video is just a quick intro for the basics of left-handed calligraphy. So for getting started, I want to talk about nib holders real quick. Um, there's two different kinds of nib holders. There's a straight holder and there's an oblique holder. And the oblique holder, this one right here, is actually made for right-handed people to help them create that slant. So when you come at this angle and you're slanting your writing this way, right-handed people need a little bit of assistance to get that slant in their writing. Um, you can get oblique holders like this as a lefty where they're switched and this is on the other side going in like this. Um, but I have found actually the most success using a straight holder, which is this one right here. And when I place my hand and I'm writing like this, I'm already getting that natural slant with my writing that most calligraphers have to try really hard to accomplish if they're right-handed anyways by using the oblique holder that's over here. So to get started, well, actually, through all the videos, I'm going to be using this holder specifically, which you can tell I've obviously uh, used a lot. So I'm going to show you a quick example of some lettering with this. So I went ahead and drew myself some guidelines right here on the paper to kind of show you um, where I'm trying to go as I'm creating my lettering each time. And I'm just going to do a quick example. I'm going to go obviously over nibs and other things a lot more in depth um, real quick here, but I just wanted to give you a sample. So I'm going to go ahead and write hello beautiful. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an example of kind of trying to go along with the slant there when I am writing in calligraphy. I'm going to go ahead and also name a couple other tools of the trade that I use a lot. This is Higgins Eternal Black Ink. You can find this, I think, at most arts and craft stores actually. I get mine at um, Michael's. Um, there's a whole ton of other art stores as well that has that has that type of ink. Um, Windsor & Newton is another really popular one, but especially for starting out, Higgins is probably going to be your best bet. And then over here, just grab it real quick. This is also something else, Windsor & Newton Gum Arabic, that would be good to go ahead and also grab some of at the store. I can explain this a little later, why it's important for different calligraphy projects. I'll do a demonstration of that near the end of the video. But anyway, to start out, we have our Higgins Eternal Ink, and then I'm going to show you a couple of nibs. This guy right here is actually a Hunt nib. I think it's a Hunt 101. Um, I'll have to confirm that in the look in the comments of the video, and I'll have that written down there. I love this one. Um, it gives me kind of the flexibility I need. And because of the slightly, 
it has a slightly a rounded edge. It doesn't snag on paper as easily as some of the other nibs do. Let me see if I can get this to focus real quick. Yeah, so that's our first one. That's my preference, but a lot of calligraphers um, recommend for starting out, this is the Nico G nib. This is really often used. Um, a really great starter nib. It's going to be a little stiffer, so you're going to be able to get those thicker and then thinner lines to um, add contrast to your lettering for the signature calligraphy look. And then this one's a little dirty. I've used it a lot, but this is a Zebra G. So the Nico G and the Zebra G are great starter nibs to have, um, especially if you're getting started out for the first time. The only problem with those is they have slightly... Um, more pointed nibs so when you're working with textured paper they can get snagged a little bit but otherwise I think they work great. Alright to do a quick demonstration for you I went ahead and put the Nico G nib into my straight holder and I'll show you kind of the difference you can get in the thick and the thin letters. Get really thin lines and then really thick which is also something a lot of people want for that signature calligraphy look. And this one, you can put a little more pressure on it and it'll be more forgiving. Whereas with the hunt that I really like to use now, if you put a lot of pressure on that, you're gonna end up with a very, very thick line and way too much ink. But this nib just allows for really good control, which is why it is so well liked for, especially for starters. All right, so this actually leads perfectly into my next point because when you're practicing calligraphy, it's really helpful to buy um, calligraphy paper. Let me pull mine out for you. Okay, so this is Strathmore calligraphy paper. This is um, writing paper with a woven finish. Um, kind of a cream color. This is great for practicing. You don't have to do anything to your ink. However, if you're practicing a lot, you're not going to want to be spending a ton of money on buying new pads of paper all the time. I mean, it's it's six dollars. It adds up eventually. Um, I've had this one for a long time. I try to use it sparingly. So the other thing I do is I use normal paper, but the problem is that when you're getting those thick lines, you can see right here that you're getting a whole bunch of um, what we call bleed. And so that is something that we definitely want to be able to avoid which is why we use this little guy that I showed you earlier. This helps us um, avoid the bleeding issue because it actually thickens the ink just enough so that it sits on the paper more instead of getting entirely absorbed and creating almost splotches around the lettering. So let me show you a quick example of writing on the same paper once I've added the gum Arabic to it. All right, so coming back to the gum Arabic and thickening our ink, I like to bar buy little jars like this that I can mix inks in. Um, I can do a whole bunch of different things with them. They're really nifty. So right here I have my pre-mixed black ink with gum Arabic in it. And so I'm gonna show you a quick lettering example using this one. I'll do another video on my channel about how to mix the ink correctly and how much gum arabic that you want to use. Obviously, too much is not going to be good either. So, I'm going to go ahead, get the nib dipped, and do some quick lettering. And already, I can see a huge difference. So 
So there we go, that's wrapped up. A little bit of a rough start on the H there. But if we look at this verse, our other example of using the same nib and the same ink without the gum Arabic, this lettering down here is a lot more clean. So basically my point is you can be buying normal printer paper from the store to be practicing on as long as you're mixing a little bit of gum Arabic with your ink. Otherwise, you're going to be going through calligraphy paper pads like crazy and it'd just be cheaper to buy a huge pack of what, 200 sheets of paper or something like that to be able to do a lot of practice. That's something that I wish I had known at the beginning. I think it would have saved me a lot of money um, and also a lot of time because you're going to the store and doing all of that. So now that I gave you kind of some tips and tricks for the trade, I want to talk about hand placement really quick. Um, I know a couple calligraphers do it differently, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I take an approach to lettering as a left handy, left hander, excuse me. So basically, when I'm writing, I'm holding my pencil almost exactly how I hold it when I write with the, excuse me, I'm holding my straight holder almost the same as I would hold a pencil or a pen. I know some lefties hold like this. Um, there's a couple different ways lefties hold their writing utensils because, you know, a lot of teachers are right-handed. So, um, but mine tends to be more most comfortable right here. And I put the, a little bit of pressure on the top here, put the pressure here, and that gets a really nice grip. What I'm going to want to do is bring this, touch it to the paper, pretty much at a 45 degree angle. And I normally have to touch the paper like this to get the nib flow, to get the ink flowing from the nib. Otherwise, um, sometimes you'll start going like I did with the H earlier and you're not having any, any flow with the ink. So touch down gently, and then you do a light upstroke, and then when you come down like this, you're bringing more pressure with your hand. Light upstroke, heavy downstroke. So obviously, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm taking a lot more time to really clearly form my letters. And a lot of what I did when I practiced is because I was teaching myself, I would look up different alphabets online, different calligraphy alphabets like Spencerian or Modern Hand, and I would basically emulate those. So that's kind of how I've learned my script that I use for a lot of the envelopes I do now. Okay, for our last topic today, I wanna to talk really quick about the care and keeping of your nibs. This is kind of also something else that I had to figure out on my own. You can tell from these guys that I've used a lot that they're actually kind of ink stained. And that, to be entirely honest, is because sometimes I get a little lazy about cleaning them like I actually should. So most of the time what I'm doing, I'm taking a paper towel, I'm wiping it down like this, and I'm getting um, the majority of the ink but you don't wanna injure your nib, especially the tip, which is really fragile. Um, so, as an additional cleaning device, you can actually get some rubbing alcohol. So I just grabbed this from, I think, Target for like a dollar. If you put a little bit of that on a paper towel, this ink is gonna come off. Yeah, you can already see it's coming off way better than it was when I was just wiping it with my paper towel. So if I'm if I'm setting a nib down because I have to go do something real quick or I have to grab something off a shelf in my office or in a lot of cases get my cat off my desk because he likes disturbing me while I'm doing calligraphy, then I'll just wipe it up with a paper towel and set it down. Um, but then at the end when you're wrapping things up, you really should try to be cleaning them off. See, look, good as new cleaning them off as diligently as possible. So far, um, because I have not been writing hours and hours every day, I have not had to buy too many new nibs. So as long as you're taking care of them correctly, 
they're going to last a decently long time for you. So there you have it. That Those are kind of my starting tips for calligraphy. Um, obviously with a left-handed perspective. Feel free to leave any comments below with questions that you have. I'm also on Instagram, uh, Eliza Ann Calligraphy. So check me out on there and I'm more than happy to answer questions on my photos as well. Have a great day and tune in next time.